How's it going everyone? My name is Mr. Krebs and today we're going to be doing something a little different. As you can see, I'm back with a fresh cut and some fresh ideas because today we're going to be doing something a little different from what I usually do. Today, we are going to be painting these bad boys. I haven't really painted any figurines solo yet, so I thought I would give it a try and we'll see how we do. So, without further ado, let's get started. So these aren't exactly my first miniatures I've ever painted. I've had my go at Warhammer, um, and ever since then I've really wanted to paint some more figurines. I'm saving up for an Orc Boy army at the moment, but in the meantime I thought I'd get some smaller D&D figures. These are the ones we're going to be painting today. I picked them up from my local Zing shop. Two of them for $10 I thought was pretty good. So I made sure to pick out a good amount of brushes and tools that I would need. I got a scalpel for cleaning up the figurines, a pencil, and a few different brushes. I laid down some paper as it's good to paint on paper because I could test the paints and write things on the side as I went along. And I also like just having paper there. I don't really like having a mat. I like being able to throw my paints around while I'm painting. So today we're going to be painting this sorcerer with a spell casting out of his hand. As the other figurine, I wanted to try at a later date. I started off with some Abaddon Black, making sure to shake very well before watering it down and applying a base coat. Immediately I regretted painting on the base coat and I wish I used the primer that I had. These came pre-primed but I wanted to use the spray paint, however it was late at night and I kind of wanted to get this started now. So note for the next figure, we'll be definitely using a primer. I tried watering down my paints as much as possible, but another thing that I kept watching in the videos I was watching at the same time was people using wet palettes. And looking back on it, I definitely needed to use one of these as my paints kept drying up and they were really thick and it left very obvious brush strokes. It also got rid of some of the detail that I really wanted to emphasize on these models, and which was a massive shame. Often when I'm painting, I like to watch a movie or listen to some music while I'm painting to help me kind of focus. While I was painting these, however, I decided to watch some Squidmar miniatures as I really enjoy his content. And Neil does a great job at breaking down painting for newbies like me, and I really benefited from that in this video. You can see me while the black paint is drying, testing out a few colors. I decided on my final colour scheme being that of a yellow trench coat with a green undercoat and some brown boots. The spell effect would be red and the guy's hair would be a jet black. I started this project pretty late at night and I soon realized it was past midnight before I'd even gotten my first coat of yellow down. So I decided I have to move things along a bit as I was getting a bit tired, but I wanted to finish it by tonight. I made sure to shake my yellow vigorously 
before applying a nice thin coat. Again I tried to water down my yellow but a wet palette would have done this much better. I kept leaving massive brush strokes all over and I lost, again, a lot of detail. In the future as well I would have done an undercoat of pink or orange under this yellow as those colours really bring uh, yellows and make them glow and I would have really enjoyed that on this character, however I have a very limited range of paints with me currently as I am doing this on a budget. In the future I'm thinking of picking up some Vallejo paints as I've heard that they are very good for miniature painting. I made sure to wash my brush after every coat as I want to maintain this brush. It's a really good brush, really fine nib, and I wanted to maintain that as it's really good at getting in some detail. And, you know, the cheapskate like me, I don't want to have to constantly buy new brushes. I came in with a second coat of yellow, and I was a bit messy with this coat. In the future, I'd go from the base up, and that was my biggest mistake, I think. I started with the outer coat. In the future I would have started with the skin tone or the undercoat and then worked my way up. Later on I had to come back and do another coat of yellow after I'd painted everything else as everything had kind of seeped in and overlaid with each other so it didn't exactly look too good. The handle I'm using there is just an old hand sanitizing bottle. I just blue tacked my figurine to it and it immediately helped me with stability and hand-eye coordination. It was how I was able to get in some really nice details. There you can see me applying some Bugman's Glow for the skin tones. Especially around that spell effect I made sure to be very careful as I wanted to get as little paint on that as possible. The spell effect was transparent, so in the future I wanted to do a really watered down red so that it'd still have light shine through it. As you can see on my arms, there's paint all over them, and this is inevitable. I'd spent the day prior uh, making some Warhammer terrain, and paint gets everywhere, and that's just part of the process. It's fun to step back from a project and have a look at your hands and see black paint seeping into your fingernails because it shows that you've put a lot of work in. Letting things dry was the boring part, knowing that the cameras were rolling and having to just sit there and watch the figure, it was really difficult not to just go right into another coat after just applying the first one. Here you can see me applying the green undercoat using some Rancor Flesh. One of the benefits of painting on paper is that you get to write things on the side. I took my time to do some drawings and I even took my time to write down some notes on what I could improve with the next model. Here you can see me applying the brown on the boots and this was the most difficult layer for me. The brown went everywhere and it stained the yellow a lot. I had to get up into the upper areas of the trench coat, um, kind of going into those difficult to reach places on the figurine, and the brown got everywhere. It's one of the reasons why I had to come back later and do a yellow coat, and I really wish in the future that I'd gone bottom layer to top layer to avoid something like this happening. You can always be a bit messy with your first layers, but as it goes up, it's good to kind of get that uh, detail in those 
smaller things in line, making sure that your paints are in the right places. Here I come in with a second coat, and I made sure to do two coats for everything. Some places got even three coats. The yellow especially, having a black undercoat really needed quite a few layers, and even then I feel like I could have put more layers on it. As he was getting towards 1 or 2 o'clock, I was starting to get really tired and fatigued. I had an energy drink with me, but still the effects of that were starting to wear off. It was around now that I was starting to get a bit impatient and thinking of how I could cut corners. One of the ways I did this was leaving the staff that the guy holds in his right hand totally untouched. Again, I'm applying a yellow coat here to make sure that all of the overlap is accounted for. And even then, I had some overlap back onto some other layers which I had to come and do. It was an insane game of back and forth with different paints, washing the brush, putting another paint on, going back, putting another paint on. It got really tedious after a while, and I think in the future this could easily be avoided by going bottom layer to top layer. Here I'm applying some gold to the trims of the coat and the pockets. I wish I had a darker yellow instead of a gold as I think a darker yellow or maybe even beige would have worked better here. However, I'd already used Bugmint and I didn't want that to match too much with the skin. I came in with some Rankar flesh, oh, I'll try and say that 10 times fast, and worked on some areas like buttons and uh, little chains on the boots. It was getting to the final details of the model that was really starting to annoy me. As my fatigueness kind of set in, focusing on small areas got really annoying and my hands were starting to cramp. It was around this time where I was contemplating just giving up. And that happens with every figurine I've painted. It gets about 75 to 80% done, and you feel like giving up. You've been going for ages, things aren't working out, getting a bit annoyed, but you just gotta push through that, and eventually, things will turn out. Good or bad, it's still an experience. Here I came in with the red and painted the spell effect, however this is probably my least favourite part of the model. I didn't water down the red enough so it wasn't transparent and I'd ruined the effect. And by then it was too late. Now I'm coming in with Agrax Earthshade, filling in all those creases and folds in the cloth and in the boots, trying to weather the character a lot. I do regret this a lot, especially on the yellow, as it ended up making the coat look really brown. And as I apply my final strokes, I started to give up, and I had to go to bed. I didn't want to work on this in the morning, and I decided to call it a day, not even working on a base or really much of the detail. But I think that's just part of the experience. It lets me know that I have to pace out my projects in the future. And here it is, the final model. I'm not a massive fan of how this turned out, but it's definitely a learning process. The eyes looked a bit weird, so did the beard, so did everything really. But there were some things I liked. I wrote out what I needed in the future on the piece of paper. Planning, water paints, making sure to spray primer, making a wet palette, paint the flesh and the bottom layers first, dry brush some of the weapons, 
and make sure to go layer by layer. I didn't get to the base, but the next model I do, I definitely want to make a really cool base. Oh, okay, well, it's the next morning and the figure's done. Um, it's not my proudest work. Overall, I really enjoyed um, actually messing around with this, having kind of a, a, a blank canvas of a figurine that I could um, try out some painting on and a high quality one at that. And I definitely learned a lot from it. Um, and hopefully that'll make the next figurine a lot more fun and look a lot better. So, uh, come back next week um, where we're going to be painting this little guy. And uh, we're going to be incorporating a lot more techniques that I've learned while um, doing this. I'm going to do a bit more research into it and then we'll uh, make a, you know, a, a different figurine. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.